So I've come over to the University of Queensland where uh, I did my undergraduate in chemistry and mathematics and I thought I would share with you uh, a bit of uh, you know, insight from some of the uh, lecturers and the lab coordinators that I worked under and uh, see if they got some experience that they could share with you. So that'll include things like what got them interested in chemistry, um, what, com what are the common mistakes that undergrads uh, make, and hopefully we'll get to show you some really cool bits of equipment that you may have not seen before. Hi, I'm Dr. Fort Sharp. I work at the School of Chemistry and Molecular Biosciences at the University of Queensland. I'm one of the lecturers in the school. I lecture uh, in first year chemistry and in second year chemistry uh, in biological inorganic chemistry. I look after the first year chemistry laboratory here, so if you come to UQ for chemistry classes, then you'll see me because I'm the person who writes the experiments and looks after the students in the laboratory. Um, I also do some research into how students learn chemistry and ways that we can improve that as well. I think chemistry is a really interesting um, subject. Um, although it may not seem like it when you're studying it at school, when you um, finish your study and start doing your own research, it gets very exciting because you get to do things that no one has ever done before. I've made new compounds that never existed in the world before and learnt new things about um, the properties of these compounds. So it's very exciting. You can use chemistry to solve real world problems, things to do with uh, the environment, pollution, you can design new drugs and there's a lot of exciting things that you can do with chemistry. Um, it's a great career. I've worked overseas before coming back to Australia and it can take you around the world if you want to. If you want to succeed in chemistry you have to realize that when you're learning chemistry you're learning a new language as well. We talk about things in chemistry like atoms and elements and we use specific words to describe them. So you need to know the language that we use to describe chemistry. It does get easier. It's like when you learn a foreign language. When you start off, you're always thinking of, well, what's the right word to use? How do I put this together? And, but it becomes easier once you know the words and you have to stop thinking consciously about what you're saying. The other thing that I would say is that it's really important to chemistry that you have a good grasp of maths. Um, a lot of chemistry, we describe properties of um, compounds in terms of mathematical equations. So to be a good chemist, you also need to be a good mathematician. Apart from that, you need to be creative and imaginative and try to approach your problems from different perspectives, different approaches, because often the first thing you think of isn't going to work, so you have to be persistent as well. The common mistakes that students make are failing to convert units properly, so things like kilojoules to joules, um, milliliters to liters, uh, also rearranging equations. A lot of students make silly mistakes and the equations themselves usually aren't too, too complicated, but just um, maybe adding something when it should be taking away and, and things like that. Uh, the other common mistake that students make is not to read the question. Um, I've marked a lot of exam papers and we give you information usually in questions to help you answer the question, but students often ignore information or hints that we give and really sometimes the question is not as hard as the students think because they've ignored part of the information that we've given in the question. When, when you come to do a laboratory class at university, you'll find that we're expecting you to be prepared for your laboratory class before you come. We give you lots of information in the laboratory manual before you come, and we're expecting that you've not only read that, but you've understood it as, as well. So if you haven't understood it, it's important that you come and seek help. There are lots of people at university willing to give you help, but you need to come and ask for it. The other thing we do is we give you um, 
computer help as well. So we have videos and animations and short quizzes online that you do before your laboratory class. So if you don't know how to do a titration, you can see a video of someone doing a titration and then you can do an animation and do a computer titration for yourself before you come. So there's no reason why you should come to a lab class unprepared. You need to understand the calculations that you're going to do. So you should have worked through the equations that you're going to use in the lab and have an understanding of how they relate to the experimental data that you're going to collect.